How many of you are hungry for the Word of God? If you would go with me in your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 28 and the 10th verse. Genesis chapter 28 and the 10th verse. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached the heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I'm with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, house of God in the Hebrew. But the name of that city had been loosed previously. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I can come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. What a powerful prophetic passage in Scripture. I want to speak to you just a little bit from this passage today. And in this text, we find that Jacob is in the worst place, in the worst situation, in the worst time of his life. He's right here in the middle of this time in his life that's devastating, that's so discouraging, that's so destructive. It seems like he's lost everything. He's lost relationship. He's lost his place. He's lost his inheritance. He's lost his family. And he's lost his country. I mean, this, he's at a place of great loss. This is a bad place that Jacob find himself in, but isn't it powerful that in the midst of that, God shows up. And I want to say to somebody here today that it's in the midst of that situation, that mess, that circumstance that God shows up. And he says, the Bible says that he was amazed at this encounter that he had because he discovered that the Lord is in this place. There are many people that base their uh, walk with God on what they feel. And I want you to know it's wonderful to feel the presence of God, to feel the anointing, to feel the atmosphere. Even like this morning, you can feel uh, the presence of God in this place. How many of you can feel the presence of God in this place? People can feel that presence and they say, wow, the Lord is here. But what I want to say this morning is how about the times that you don't feel? I say, how about the times that you don't feel, that you don't feel the presence, that you don't feel the anointing, that you don't feel the atmosphere, that there's nothing? How about those times? I want you to know that God is still in that place, even when you don't feel the presence of God, because the presence is, is beyond our feelings. This was a bad place for Jacob. This was a bad time for Jacob. He didn't even feel the presence. That encounter stunned him because God was there and God showed up, even though he said, I didn't know the Lord is in this place. I'm here to tell somebody, it doesn't matter what you feel right now, the presence of God is with you. Your flesh and your circumstances may tell you there's nothing. Your flesh and your circumstances, your mind may tell you God's not there. 
It may seem like everything's falling apart, and you may feel like you're struggling, but like Jacob this morning, I prophesy to you that the Lord is in that place, even though you may not feel it or know it or see it, the Lord is right there. If you believe that prophetic word for your life, give Him a praise, somebody. Snatch that word and say, He's with me. Come on, say, He's with me. So I declare the Lord is in that place. What place? That place of destruction, despair, discouragement, loss, that dark place where the sun had set, the Lord is in that place. And I prophesy the Lord is in this place where you find yourself right now. The place you find yourself in right now, the Lord is in that place. The Lord is in that place. Would you tell two or three people around you, the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. I just saw a husband or a wife look at one another and shake their head. They said it under their breath. They said, the Lord is in this place. And they, 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 they find it hard to believe. But hear the prophetic word this morning. I came as a prophetic word to you. I came as a prophetic voice to you. I'm here to awaken you to a reality above your flesh in spite of your circumstances. The Lord is in this place where you find yourself today. And He will encounter you and bless you. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jacob got there and Jacob was tired. He was so tired the sun had set. He was so tired that he found a stone and slept on the stone, used the stone as a pillow. How many of you know you've got to be tired to sleep on a stone for a pillow? He was tired. He was tired. Have you ever been tired? Have you ever got so tired, tired of issues, tired of problems, tired of situations? I'm not talking about physical tired. I'm just tired mentally, tired spiritually. Tired of people, tired of the same old, tired of the circumstance, tired of the same cycle. Jacob was tired when he got to that place. He was so tired. Some of you have had warfare in your life, issues, dilemmas, in your life, and you feel tired. He got so tired that he took that stone and he slept on it. He was desperate. He was alone. He had no identity. Listen, when somebody's desperate, they'll do strange things. They'll sleep on a stone for a pillow. When people are desperate, they'll do strange. Desperate people are dangerous people. Desperate people will sleep on pillows of stone. Desperate people, how many of you know, they look beyond the comfort of their situation. All they want is some rest. But I'm here to tell you that Jacob didn't find rest outside of the presence of God. It was in that place while he was sleeping on that hard stone that God showed up and gave him a word, a promise, and a blessing that will change his destiny forever. Hallelujah. So tired people are desperate people. And he found himself sleeping on this hard stone in this hard place and God appears. I love the fact that the Bible says God appeared to him in that hard place. We think that God will only encounter us in a good place, in a holy place. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that God is not afraid of unholy ground. He's not intimidated of unholy ground. He will show up in unholy places. He will come to your place where you find yourself. And when He comes, He will make unholy ground holy ground. Hallelujah. This was a place of pain for Jacob. This was a hard place. This was a difficult place. But right in the middle of that place of pain, God speaks to him. And God speaks to him in the middle of that storm. God's in the middle of your storm. He's in the middle of your crisis. He's in the middle of your dilemma. He's in the middle of that mess. Right in the middle of it, he speaks to you. He comes to you. He blesses you. Hallelujah. He gives you a prophetic promise to take you into your future. And God says to Jacob, I am the God of Abraham and of Isaac. In other words, I'm the God of your grandfather, and I am the God of your father, and I am going to bless you, and the land that you're sleeping on, I have given to you, and to your seed, hallelujah, and all nations will be blessed because of what I'm going to do in your life. God speaks a generational blessing over Jacob. 
I want you to know that what God's doing in your life is not just about you. It's above you. It's beyond you. God is moving in a generational way. He's moving because of what fathers and grandfathers have done, and He's going to move in your life in such a way that it will affect your children and your children's children. If you believe that prophetic word, give Him a praise like you expect. God to bless you, your children, and your children's children. Somebody shout amen. amen. I am the God of Abraham and Isaac, and I am going to bless you, God says to him. There's something I sense God is doing now in your life that's generational. Please lift your hand and say it's generational. If you would tell the person next to you, it's generational. It's generational. Somebody say it's generational. It's not just about you. It's about generations. God is a generational God. And He says, I'm going to bless you in spite of you, in spite of your failures, in spite of your mistakes, in spite of the, all the troubles you've in. I'm going to bless. I need about 50 people to give God a praise like this a generational blessing about a manifest in your life. Woo. Praise the Lord. For those who don't have children, that's fine. I want you to know it's then spiritual generational legacy. Amen. Some people say, well, I don't have children, I, I, but God's going to do something in your life that's going to give you a spiritual heritage. Hallelujah. People will look at you and say, because of you, they believe. Because of you, because of what they saw in you, they are serving God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I take the word of God today. He's moving generationally. He's moving beyond time. He's moving because of predetermined decisions, sovereign decisions that God has made. God is determined to bless you. God is determined to bless you. He says to Jacob, I will bless you. He says, I will bless you. How many of you know that doesn't sound conditional? It says, he says, I will bless you. He is determined to bless you. Jacob, I am determined to bless you. I will bless you. I want to say to somebody this morning, God is determined to bless you. Hallelujah. You say, well, I'm tired. I'm desperate. I'm alone. I lost my identity. I've had setbacks. I've made mistakes. I've got big failures. God is determined to bless you. Jacob had it all. He was in a dark place, tired, but God said, I will bless you. And I'm going to bless you, Jacob, because of your father and your grandfather who obeyed my voice. Woo, hallelujah. And there's nothing that hell can do to stop it. There's nothing that the powers of darkness can do to stop it. There's some things that God's going to do in our lives that hell cannot stop it. God is determined to do it. And He's determined to bless us. He's going to take that place of pain and turn it into a place of rain. From that moment, Jacob stood up and he woke up. He said, the Lord is in this place. He said, and now this will be the house of God. He erected a stone, and that stone became God's house. Oh, I tell you what, it became a place of rulership. It became a place of dominion. It became a spiritual portal. There, it was, there was an open heaven over that spot. It became the house of God. And I want to declare over somebody here, there's an open heaven over you. The place of pain, the place of struggle, the place of loss. God is going to open up heaven over you. And that place is going to become the house of God. An open heaven. Hallelujah. God didn't speak to Jacob about his past, his pain, his weakness, but about his future. I am going to bless you. And in your future, all people will be blessed. God doesn't talk about our past. He talks about our destiny. He talks about that which is to come. He sees what others do not see. And then Jacob takes that stone that he slept on, puts it upward, erects it, and anoints it, and says, this is now the house of God. He says, this is the gateway of heaven. Heaven is opened here. Heaven is open over this place. 
And I want to say to you this morning that heaven opened over that place because of that stone that he was sleeping on. I believe that that rock is a type of Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the stone. And when you come to a place of of weariness and tiredness and despair. You need to rest on the promises of the Word of God. When you rest, when you sleep, when you surrender to the Word of God, that rock, I say that rock, which is Christ Himself, will open up heaven over you and open up heaven over your situation. I came this morning with a word. Let heaven open up because we have the rock. We have the mighty stone. Hallelujah. He is the stone the builders rejected, but he has become the chief corner stone. I believe that that stone in David's sling that brought the giant down is a type of the living Christ. He is the power. He is the word that brought the powers of darkness down. Won't you give the stone the chief cornerstone, the rock of our salvation. Give him a high praise. Heaven is opened over your life. It's time to rest on the promises of God. Everybody in this place, do a prophetic act with me and say, there's an open heaven over me. One last time, there's an open heaven over us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every time someone walks under an open heaven, they can hear the voice of God. When heaven is open, you can hear the voice of God. When heaven is closed, you hear nothing. You pray, you fast, you listen to sermons, you search on Google, you watch and do everything you can, you anoint yourself with oil, you don't hear anything. But when heaven is open over you, you hear the voice of God. When heaven opened over Jacob, he heard the voice of God. In the midst of his struggle, God said, I am the God that's going to bless you. I don't know about you, but I want that kind of God. I want to serve that kind of God. I want to worship that kind of God that's not afraid to get into your mess, your trouble, your mishap, and show up and say, I'm with you, and I'm not going to leave you until I do what I said I would do. What a God we serve. Every time there's an open heaven over you, revelation comes to you. Direction comes to you. When the heavens are shut, we don't see. We don't know. We don't feel. But when heaven opens, it's a spiritual portal. It can be defined as a gate, a door, or a window. And that speaks of easy access. If there's a door opened, if heaven is open, there's easy access. When heaven is not opened, it's a struggle. When heaven is not opened, it's not easy. You've got to fight. You've got to push. And it's fine. Sometimes we experience that. You've got to do some spiritual warfare. You've got to deal with devils. And you've got to get to that place where you open up. But how many of you know when heaven is opened... There's nothing to deal with. There's nothing to fight. You just step right into the presence of God. You just step right into that flow. I'm here to prophesy. I don't know who it's for. Maybe it's somebody online or somebody in the building. But there is an open heaven over you. This day, you will experience an opening up of the heavens over your life. Access. It's going to be easy access. When the heavens are open, we walk by faith. When the heavens are open, we move from the natural to the supernatural. And only God has the power to open up heavens. We don't have the power. God is the one who opens up heavens. And when He opens up heaven, oh, I'm here to tell you, it's up to us to maintain an open heaven. That's why when God opened the heavens over Jacob and He heard that prophetic word, He stood up erected that stone, anointed it. He said, this place will always have an open heaven. It will be the gateway to heaven. This will be the house of God. I will come here and worship God and bring my tenth to God and and call upon His name here because you've got to maintain an open heaven. You can't allow that thing to close. 
People have experienced open heavens and then the heavens close up again. It is possible to have an open heaven and then it shuts again. Many of you have experienced that. Oh, I had an open heaven. Apostle, I had an open heaven in that time, in that season of my life. Everything was going so well and then suddenly everything closed up. It's possible. We have to maintain an open heaven. We have to make sure that heaven stays open over our homes. Heaven stays open over our families, over our lives. we got to anoint that place where we are at with prayer, with worship, with seeking God's face, with holiness, with sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. The heavens can close over a family. The heavens can close over a church. The heavens can close over an individual. But this morning, prophetically, I say the heavens are opened over you, over me, over our families, over this house. Give God a praise and say open heaven. Come on, somebody. Open heaven. Would you pray with me online as well? Put it in the chat and say open heavens. Let heaven open now in Jesus' mighty name. That's why the Lord Jesus sent his disciples, his apostles in Luke chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. He sent them into towns and villages. He said, whenever you enter a home, speak over that house. Speak over that home. Speak over that family and say, shalom. Peace. He said, and if you speak peace, your peace will come upon it if they are worthy to receive it. But if they are not worthy, that peace that you speak will come back to you. But if they receive you as my messenger, if they receive you as the one I send to them, if they receive that word, that blessing, then peace will come upon them. And this morning I came to this house to declare to you by the power of the prophetic word, shalom be upon you. Peace be upon you. Peace be upon your family. Peace be upon your house. Peace and open heaven in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of you receive the peace of God? How many of you receive the word of God? How many of you receive blessing right now that's coming upon your life in Jesus' mighty name? The signs of an open heaven is number one that you will have encounters with God. Jacob had an encounter with God. Number two, you will begin to feel the presence of God. He woke up and said, the Lord is in this place. I didn't know it before, but now I feel it. You will feel the presence of God. You will feel the presence of God. Number three, the third sign is you will transition from natural to supernatural. You will transition from natural to supernatural. Jacob was trying in the natural to get the blessing. He tried in the natural to get his inheritance, to get what he, what he felt stirring inside of him. That's why he tried and did deceive his father, lied to his father, put on Esau's garments, put on hairy skin on his arms to look and smell and feel like Esau because in the natural he was trying to get the birthright he he had his brother sold the birthright to him. He was doing it in the natural. But when he had the heavens open up over his life and God spoke to him, he moved from the natural. He moved from scheming, lying, conniving, deceiving, backbiting to the supernatural. He didn't have to fight or struggle anymore. He didn't have to try and win favor anymore. He didn't have to try and push himself in anymore. He stepped into a place of the supernatural where the blessing began to manifest on his life. And I'm prophesying to somebody here today, you are moving from the natural to the supernatural. Things are going to happen in your business, your family, your workplace, in your life that's going to be supernatural. Oh, would you lift your hands and receive it, praying the Holy Ghost, somebody. Take that word for your life. Take that word for your life. Number four, when heaven is opened over you, you have effortless results. Number five, you receive revelation. You receive finances. You receive miracles. You receive breakthroughs. 
And number six, when heaven is open over you, over you, you, you work under peace. You work under peace. There's rest. There's rest. You work from a place of rest. Jacob was restless. He was a wanderer. He was, his name means trickster. He would trick and deceive and lie. His whole life was a, a life of war, a life of fighting to be seen, to be recognized, to be blessed. He caught onto his brother's heel at birth. But how many of you know all that ended? All that ended when heaven opened up over him and God spoke to Jacob. He began to enter into rest. God began to move in Jacob's life. God began to deal with his problems. God began to fight his battles. God began to bless him and raise him up. I prophesied somebody in this house, you're going to flow. You're going to flow. You're going to flow. I just prophesied there's a flow coming and you're going to flow. You're going to flow in your marriage. You're going to flow with your children. You're going to flow in your business. You're going to flow in the anointing. You're going to flow in the supernatural. You're going to flow in the presence of God. It's not going to be mechanical. It's not going to be program. It's not going to be five steps. It's not going to say, well, I'm going to do this and then that. It's just going to flow. And however God flows, that's how it's going to manifest in your life. Oh, lift those hands and worship Him. I sense it. I sense it. Lift those hands and worship. Online, you're in the house of God. There's a flow coming to your life. It's just going to flow. The supernatural, the anointing, the blessing, the presence, the favor. It's just going to flow through your life. Woo! And you're going to flow. And it's going to be without effort. Rest. Rest. How many of you know if you get in the right current, if you take the right wave, that current or that wave can take you places where you wouldn't be able to go in your own strength? I say the right current will take you into the deep where you could never go swimming by your own ability. Just get in the current. I say just get in the current. Just get in the flow. Just get in the flow. Just get in the current of the wave of the Spirit, the move of the Spirit, the flow of the Spirit. When you're in that current, it will take you. It will take you. We are trying to take it. No, let it take you. Let it flow. And you move with that current. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you'll flow. You'll get on the other side without being tired. You'll get on the other side without sweat. You'll get on the other side without drowning. The current will take you where you need to be in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, my God, I sense that right now. You'll never flow, my friend, in the supernatural if you have a manual in front of you with five steps. The supernatural is all about a flow. The presence is all about a flow. The Holy Spirit is all about a flow. What God's going to do in your life is all about a flow. You've got to get out of your mind. You've got to, oh, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to lose your mind. You've got to get out of your mind and get over into the Spirit. Oh, I dare about 60 people to get up on your feet and give them a praise like there's a flow breaking out in your life. Would you lift your hands and your voice and pray like there's an open heaven over you? Come on. Pray like there's a flow coming over you. Pray, pray, pray like God is about to bless you. Yeah, I want to hear the people praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Speak in your heavenly language. There's a flow to it. There's a flow. Online, go ahead where you are. There's a flow to that prayer language. There's a flow to that anointing. Oh, yeah. Let heaven open up over your family, your house, your body, your mind, your finances, over this house in the name of Jesus. Woo, glory to God.
Remain standing everywhere. Everybody stand in the presence of God online as well. I want to say this to you. When heaven opened up over Jacob, he had to maintain that open heaven. I want to tell you, we've got to maintain the open heaven. Stay connected. Stay connected. They, Jacob said, this stone, this stone. How many of you know Jesus is the stone? The chief cornerstone. Stay connected to the presence of God. Stay connected to the word of God. Stay connected to the anointing. He poured oil on that stone. Stay connected to the anointing. Stay connected to the house of God. And let me give you quickly, as you remain standing, four quick ways to sustain an open heaven. Number one, rejoice always. Rejoice always. The moment we stop rejoicing, heaven closes. Maintain a lifestyle of joy, rejoicing, and praise. Number two, pray without ceasing. Stay in constant prayer, in constant fellowship with God. Develop a close relationship with the Father. Number three, let there be movement. Don't stay passive. Move with God. Move with the Spirit. Flow with God. Number four, stay in the presence of God. The presence of God is what keeps us and sustains us with an open heaven. Jacob said, I never want to lose this place. I never want to lose this presence. I'm going to move forward into my destiny, but I'm never going to lose this spot. I'm never going to lose this place. I'm always going to come back to it. I'm always going to come back to it. And I'm going to mark it. I'm going to anoint it. I'm going to call it a new name that this is the place where heaven opened up over me. How many of you know you always come back to the presence of God? You always stay in the presence of God. You always honor the presence of God. Let heaven open up. If you believe heaven is opening up over your house, your family, and generationally today for us, would you grab the hand of a friend or a spouse close by, lift it up to God? We're going to pray over our families, our homes, our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Are you ready? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, I receive your word. I receive your prophetic word. Right now, you are in this place. You are in this moment of my life. And I receive your word. You are determined to bless me. I receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus. Today, I declare there is an open heaven over my life, over my family, over my future, over my finances, over my decisions. In the name of Jesus, over this coming week, over the month of April, over the month of April, shout it, prophesy it, over the month of April. There's an open heaven. There's an open heaven. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now go ahead and pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit where you are. Come on. Declare it in the Spirit. Loosen in the Spirit. Pray like there's an open heaven now. Speak like there's an open heaven now. Yeah. I see blessings. I see favor. I see opportunities. I see new connections. I see revelation. I see dreams. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see. I see good reports coming. Somebody's ears are opening up to the Spirit. I release the prophetic anointing. I release the spirit of prophecy. I release it right now all over this room in the name of Jesus. That eyes will see and ears will hear what God is saying and doing now. In this place, in this moment. Oh yeah. Yes, it's happening corporatively in this house. If you are sick in your body, put your hand on that part of your body. 
where you are sick, where you have pain, where you have infirmity, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now as you put your hand on that place, that place, that place in your body now becomes holy ground. That place becomes holy ground. I command that pain, that infirmity, loose that limb, loose that body, loose that bone, loose that joint. Now in the name of Jesus, let healing flow, let healing manifest, let the power of God touch that organ, that body now. Let it become holy, holy, holy in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, receive it, thank Him for it, thank Him for it, thank Him for it right now, it's manifesting, it's manifesting. Every person that says, I need prayer, I need God to touch me, I need a miracle, I need something to open up, I need something to open up, I need something to open up. If that's you and you need prayer and ministry, quickly come to the altar, quickly come to the altar. I want to ask leaders to come and assist me, ushers come and assist me and pass them on. And let's just begin praying over the people immediately as they come. Let's not wait. There's a flow. There's a flow. There's a flow. God is moving. God is moving in this moment. He's moving in this place right now. Let heaven open up over the people. Let heaven open up over the people this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, this morning as I lay my hands on the people, as we lay our hands on the people, all the ushers and leaders, I want you to put your hands gently on that person now and pray for them now. Pray for them now. Pray for them. I'm going to come and lay hands upon you. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, keep praying. Oh, we stand and we loose an open heaven. We loose the power of God. We loose the word of God. Let there be a release. Let there be an opening up over your life. Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. Thank you, Father, for every person that came to this altar, that from this moment the heavens opens up over them, that there will be answers breakthroughs, effortless victory, favor of God in Jesus' name. And the church agrees and says amen to that. Can we give our God an advanced praise offering for every answered prayer? Would you declare it with me this morning? Online join us and say the Lord is good. And His mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. Now, people of God, the heavens opened up over Jacob's life, over his destiny, over his future. And he said, this stone will be the place. This place will be precious to me, special to me, holy to me. I will bring to this place a tenth of all that you give me. There's something about an open heaven that affects you in the area of blessing. 
I want to remind you of what God said in Malachi chapter 3 and from the 10th verse. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Watch this. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. When there's an opening up of the heavens, blessings are poured out. God said to Israel, I will pour out such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I declare that over the house of God, over God's people today, here and online, the heavens are opened over you. And blessing, such blessing, shall be poured out on you that you will be a carrier of that blessing, a dispenser of that blessing. The blessing shall overflow. Beyond you, it shall overflow unto others. Others will be blessed because you're blessed. Can you say amen to God's word? People are in need of an open heaven. I, I believe that in spite of what's happening in, in a nation, even though a nation may go through financial and economic trouble and turmoil and inflation and, and price increases and be overwhelmed with debt, even if a nation goes through that, God's people in the midst of that nation can have an open heaven over them. God says, I will pour out such blessing upon my people that it will overflow in their lives. This morning, I want to give an opportunity to come like Jacob and give to the God. Give into the house of God. Sow into the kingdom of God. Invest into the work of God. Bring to God that which is His. And as you do, you're connecting that to the supernatural power and blessing of God. And there's an opening up of the heavens over your resources, your family, your life, your finances. God said it, and God will do it. In fact, He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Every time you honor God with your giving, it's a rebuke to the devourer that tries to destroy and harm everything in your life. How many of you know the enemy does not want you to be successful? The enemy is fighting you on every side to keep you from breaking through. But I'm here to tell you, when God rebukes the enemy, he has to go. Can you say amen? He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Heaven will be opened over your life, and my blessing will flow freely over your life. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. If you need a tithing envelope, please slip up your hand and Usher will bring one to you. And please write down your prayer request on the envelope. We pray over those envelopes every Thursday in our corporate prayer gatherings. I want to ask everybody online. Our details will be on the screen for those that are online right now. And go ahead right now. All the details are there as well. And I want you online to put as a reference today, open heavens. Just put as a reference, open heavens. Take God at His word and say, this is my word, my promise. I receive it. This is an open heaven for me in this coming month of April. I'm stepping into an open heaven in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, would you get your offering ready, church? You'll see that which you want to bring to God. And we're going to offer to God this morning in a very special way. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to pray over this offering. And if you want to use your card, you can do so at our welcome desk. There are people there that will assist you and help you. Uh, right there at the entrance of the church at the welcome desk if you want to use your card. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that the heavens are opening up. I thank you that such blessing is poured out. There will not be room enough to receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus and the church says amen to that. All right. Now, people of God, uh, if for any reason... The, uh, the offering bag doesn't reach you. I want to say you can come to the altar as well. Here on the left and right, there are offering bowls in the front as well. Go ahead, ushers. Let's receive the offering for God. We should be able to cover everybody. But if you, for any reason, get missed or skipped, come to the altar. There's a place here as well for you. Father, I thank you for your blessing that is flowing upon people's lives and an opening up of the heavens over this congregation in Jesus' name. And the church says amen to that. Uh, worship team, could you join me one more time, please? And we're going to honor God as we give to God, as we worship God. 
we just declare the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. While they're coming, let me just say this to you. Tonight at 6 o'clock is going to be a powerful prophetic night. I don't want you to miss tonight. Can I see how many of you were blessed this morning in the presence of God? How many of you received something in the presence of God? Wow. 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 Hallelujah. Well, then I want you to come again tonight. Be blessed tonight. Double dose. Double portion. Get a double dose. Get a double dose. Amen. Get a double shot. Hallelujah. For the coming week, the coming months that lie ahead, tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a double dose service. A prophetic night, a powerful night in the Spirit. Bring family and friends. Let's come expecting God to, to do a mighty work. Those online, I want you to join us again tonight at 6 for a powerful time in the Spirit of God, in the presence of God, in the glory of God, in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Thank you, thank you. Well, let's just sing this song to the Lord. Let's sing this song as we continue to give and worship God. Oh, yes, worship in this morning. person in this house, every person connected online, Lord, we pray today that there will be fire, fire from God burning in their hearts, burning in their lives, burning in their souls, burning in their eyes, burning in their voices, that they will be on fire, that they will be fervent in spirit, that they will be burning once. That the flame of God will be upon them. Tongues as of fire. In the name of Jesus. And if you believe the fire of God is going to burn on you and in you this coming week. Would you give them a praise like you're on fire for God? Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Would you tell three people around you, I'm on fire for God. 
You may be seated in the presence of God. Everybody online right now, I bless each and every one of you. May the presence, may the fire, may the goodness, may the blessing of God be your portion in the coming weeks. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Pastor Mark, would you come?